I think we can all agree that the 80s were the greatest time to be a kid. There was just so much cool shit around us. Some of it was bound to fall into the cracks. We didn't know it then, but the 80s were a simpler time. A little more carefree. Trading cards, mad balls, and kids were still allowed to make pew pew sounds as freely as they were allowed to play baseball at recess. So when Filmation was looking for a successor to Masters of the Universe, a cowboy seemed logical. Especially one set in the sci-fi genre. With superhero undertones, it was a win-win, right? Clearly by the ratio of yays versus nays, not many of my contemporaries have fond memories of Bravestar, but I don't believe that to be an indication of a bad concept. Just one that cues a bit of reinvention. Let me get this straight. Disney has felt the need to reboot DuckTales, Muppet Babies, and they're making an animated sequel of sorts to The Rocketeer. Who the hell has been asking for that? Oh. Yeah, okay, whatever. Meanwhile, the Gummy Bears, one of their greatest creations, just sits on the shelf. As an orphan child. I mean, I'm happy it's on Disney+. Plus. I just don't get why this great concept was never revisited. Get your shit together, mouse. The year is 2020. And as we live in a world that has fandoms for magic, knights, knights and magic, it kind of makes me wonder why Hasbro has left money on the table with visionaries. The 1987 cartoon was built around the concept of a planet where science and technology had failed, giving way to magic. Now there have been rumors that Hasbro is looking to incorporate visionaries into a cinematic universe. But if you ask me, not that you would, I don't think that's necessary. There's more than enough wiggle room for a showrunner to come in, get rid of what doesn't work, expand on what does, and reboot as an animated series. In the way Noelle Stevenson has rebooted She-Ra, that's a really great show, you should watch it. Is there such a thing as too much positivity in a child's life? The 80s didn't think so. And as the father of the poozer Princess Stormageddon, neither do I. Normally, I try to avoid making grand statements. But there's a hardcore truth that needs to be pointed out. So here I am. Look at the world around us. Children need positivity now more than ever. So here's hoping that Hallmark tries to bring back the protector of colors, Rainbow Bright. Maybe round up not only quality creators, but quality voice actors as well. I nominate Tara Strong. I think she would pull out something really fun for this colorful character. To say the 80s were all about excess is pretty fair. Mattel released like a thousand Barbie dolls. Spider-Man was given a third monthly series. And there were two versions of laser tag for each household to choose from. And then one day some glorious soul thought to themselves, if one Bionic Man was good, then half a dozen must be great. I hope that whoever it was has seen riches beyond their wildest dreams. Once the concept was fleshed out, it would see the blended family of Jack Bennett in a horrible accident, one that would make it necessary for them to receive bionics, as he once did. If you're wondering what their villains were like, I think Opposite Number and Cookie Cutter are the best way to describe them. Even the most iconic rogues gallery has a few of those lying around. A family of superheroes was nothing new, even less so now. Whereas the Fantastic Four had the Thing and Herbie the Robot, the Bionic Six had Fluffy and a theme song that totally rocked. Tell me the FF got a better deal and I'll call you a liar.
it's entirely possible that I'm blinded by nostalgia. But I gotta tell you, before you think of coming at me, just know, I'm willing to die on this hill. To my knowledge, there's no plans to revive the Bionic 6 in any medium, but there should be. My hope is that whoever owns the rights will realize what they're sitting on, and like making money. Cartoons, toys, games, a live-action movie, want it all. 